Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kunal. Uh, can you guys hear me at the back? Uh, right. Uh, okay. So I I am giving a talk on uh, graph everything. It's basically uh, how we approach uh, graphing at Plevo. You know how we graph data at Plevo, how we measure data, and how we ultimately just put it on graphs. Uh, there, that's my Twitter ID. There, you can follow me there if you want to. Okay, so I work at Plevo. Uh, we started as a, a open source framework, and uh, we just had a basic setup going on with uh, without any sort of uh, logging or any sort of measurement of you know valid data. And we have a lot of components in our in our system which you know. Uh, do do logging, you know, send out data to files, write data to da databases. So so Django here, uh, we have data like account credits, we have data like calls, uh, things like creating an application, uh, creating an endpoint on Plevo. Shinkin is a monitoring tool which gives us data about servers, uh, CPU load on servers, uh, memory on servers. Homer is this awesome SIP trace uh, tool which gives us traces about SIP invites. SIP is this protocol, telephony protocol, which gives us invites, registers, uh, things like cancel notifications. And Tank is our internal monitoring tool, uh, which, which uh, again has a lot of data input. Okay, so uh, a couple of months ago, my my co-founder, right, he came up to me and he was like. Kunal, just just tell me the number of calls going on uh, on our system currently, okay? And I log on to our machines, you know, and and I actually see this, okay? <laughs> really, so I just can't deduce anything from these logs, right? And we weren't measuring this; we were just dumping them into files, and uh, we had no idea, you know, we weren't even you know log rotating them. We had no idea what what this actually means, okay? So. I looked up on the internet, okay, uh, saw a couple of open source tools, and ultimately we boiled down to to Graphite. So Graphite is this awesome open source tool where you just dump in data to it, and it'll generate graphs based on what what data uh, you know you you put it in. And so basically, you see here there are these four graphs about memory on our DB servers, okay. So you can see this this green uh, DB CFG. This is like thousand percentage of memory, okay. So graphite has these uh, three components, okay. So one is the the Django web web app, which which actually generates the graphs. Second is carbon. Carbon is uh, basically a sort of a data collector, okay. It it you just send data to it using this particular format. So I'll I'll say let's let's do a plevo voice su dot uh, outgoing 23 and a timestamp. So what it does is it'll take this 23 data as in this particular uh, 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 naming convention, okay? And since this is the outgoing voice data, it, it'll actually trace uh, keep a track of the timestamp against this data. So you keep sending data to it, you know, every second or every you know minute based on your needs. Okay, and where it stores the data is, is, is called Whisper. Okay, so Whisper is this uh, RRD tool. Okay, so it's a round robin database which will keep flushing data points based on the, the format you configure it with. So let's say I want to keep track of calls, you know, day on a daily basis, but after a month, you know, it is no longer of use to me. So I'll actually dump all those monthly data into into one particular you know, uh, retention format. So if I do a 60 second per data point, so one data point is stored for 60 seconds, okay, and one day of retention is 14400. So one four four zero data points will be stored per day, okay. Uh, graphing actually has a lot of uh, uh, data structures related to it, okay. So there's something called counters. So counters is you keep incrementing something, you know, every uh, at, at every time frame. So let, let's say you want to 
have a count of the number of SMSs sent in an hour, okay, or or the recharges done every month. So you you use a counter data structure here. Gog is something where you where things keep increasing as well as decreasing. So uh, you know disk space available on a system or requests per second uh, of, of you know query API queries. There are a couple of more here. Uh, this, this is one thing uh, called uh, RRD underscore uh, tool. Okay, so RRD underscore tool is is actually the round robin database tool, which which has a completely different architecture towards it. That data structure. Okay, so how does Graphite expose its APIs? Okay, so Graphite has this render API. So so Graphite is a web app, right? And when you access this particular uh, uh, URL, let's say you want to get data 24 hours from now, okay, 24 hours back from now, and you want to target these two particular uh, API processes. So there's a G-Unicorn process running on API Server 1, and a, a G-Unicorn process running on API Server 2. And you want to find the CPU uh, load of it, okay? So you'll actually call this particular URL, all right? And Graphite will actually generate this graph for you. It's a SVG graph, you know, it'll generate it in the browser and you can actually see, uh, you know, th this particular API 2 has, has, the load is increased to 15 and then we can actually go and debug as to see where the problem is. Okay. So, uh, the graphite uh, graph is, is basically an SVG format. It looks pretty shady, you know, with, with really black uh, interfaces and you know, green and blue uh, kind of designs. So, graphite exposes, it, exposes its output as, as, as a JSON format, okay, which, which you can use in other graphing libraries, like there are D3 graphing libraries, you know, rickshaw-based graphing libraries. Okay. So, there comes Graphene. Graphene is this JavaScript library to actually uh, generate graphs directly out of your Graphite URL. So instead of using the whole render SVG format URL, you put your graph URL here with the JSON format, and Graphene actually does you know all the hard work of generating those graphs in JavaScript. Okay, and there's no SVG used here. So uh, now, when I actually look at this data, we have uh, uh, you know made sense of this. We have put this into our database. We have put this into Graphite. We have actually structured it in such a way that we can make useful sense out of it. And finally, we we currently have have this. Okay, so we have voice call monitoring. We have you know monthly expenditure spent. You know this is all generated using. Uh, graphene. Okay, so I didn't expect my talk to end so soon, but <laughs> 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 thank you. <laughs> Great, so more questions for him then. <laughs> <laughs> more discussions. So basically, you're just pinging, um, was it graphite? Oh, yeah, so, so. Carbon exposes, uh, you know, the the it, it exposes a port. Okay, so you send data to it using a TCP socket. You know, so you can actually send data to it in that particular format. Just open a socket and send it to it. But there are a lot of other ways you can send data to it. Uh, this is one. Whether this is you, you've heard of StatsD by any chance? So StatsD is this awesome library by HC. HC is this company, and they it's written Node.js and they have uh, various, you know, data structures and file form uh, and formats to send data through Graphite. Okay, uh, so you can actually use that too. But, but usually, Graphite exposes it as as a as a port, the TCP port. So if I wanted to capture like user events on the front side, how would I? Is there so I can post it using Ajax? Or yeah, you can actually do it using Ajax. Ajax would be the, the best choice here. So you just you just have expose the URL and then handle it accordingly. 
So does this end up becoming an internal web interface that your engineers are using to find out what's happening, or how does it actually be used? Okay, so we actually use it to monitor a lot of things. Like as you see, you we saw you saw the lo load pattern. So uh, let's say you see a spike in the load. Okay, we will have to go debug into our logs, check check why that load is there. So things like that. So when when it's put on a graph, you can actually analyze it, right? In, in, instead of just you know numbers. So that's why. And also we exp uh, use this on our user dashboards to let our users know about the number of calls in our system and uh, especially SMS is sent throughout the day, things like that. So is that preset or, I mean, you probably have like standard stuff that you look at, like number of calls, number of SMS. Mm -hmm. Then if you wanted to, to do something different, would you have to hard code that or? No, so if, if let's say tomorrow we decide to, you know, keep track of number of signups, all right. So I'll, I'll, based on that particular format, okay, uh, yep, based on this particular format, I'll just randomly send the data to, to Graphite, okay. And you don't have to have a, 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 a hard-coded schema. You, you can just send it in this particular format and it'll keep track of it. So let, let's say uh, Plevo signups. Uh, 23 or 1. So this will be like a counter, right? So you keep incrementing it uh, as, as signups go ahead. How, how does it know to parse out whether you wanted a, you know, how does it know a bar chart or a graph? Or something? Oh, so uh, the bar chart is done using, using Graphene, okay. which is a completely uh, different library. So you have to have, so, so, then the normal, uh, this particular code, right, this particular code will ju just generate uh, a line chart. Okay. okay. So, so for, for a bar chart, you, ha you have to do some other uh, calculations. Is there a limit on the, the variations of the chart type available? Uh, in, in graphene, you mean? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I know of line charts, I know of bar charts. The there are some uh, very, uh, very, uh, very um, less frequently used uh, chart type, like maybe something that's known as profit pool. Then would you be able to define it if, if you know how, how you want it to look like, things like that? Uh, I think we get you first. If, if, if you know there is a certain uh, chart type that is uh, very seldom used, like uh, one I, I can think of profit pools, okay. then if you know how, how you can define it, would you be able to define and then create the chart as you Yeah, actually you'll have to take a look at the Graphene code. Yeah, graphene actually uses this library called D3. Okay. So you can actually have to modify a few things in D3, probably expose it as, 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 as your particular kind of graph and then and then use use that. So that's not a data. Sorry. Sorry. That's not a, so you're thinking, where does all the data get stored at? Oh, so data gets stored in this database called Whisper. Whisper, right? Yeah. Right. So, so Whisper is this is this uh, a round robin database kind of a thing. Okay. So, what it does is, let's say you keep sending data to it uh, every every second. Okay. Uh, so, if you if you've actually, okay, then let me get get to that. Okay. So, so you have this particular uh, schema. Okay. So. 60 seconds per data point, okay? No matter how many uh, data points you send per second, it will just store one data point every 60 seconds, all right? And after, it, with the retention of one day, so every day it will, you know, delete all these data points, okay? Average it, okay? And then retain that just one, one particular day's data point. The Whisper database is separate from your. Yeah, so Whisper is is a database which works with Graphite and Carbon. So, so Graphite is a combination of uh, Whisper and Carbon. So you have to send the data fr from your production side, I guess, mm -hmm. to Whisper. Yeah. And which which is sent through uh, through Carbon. So you send your data in this particular format. In terms of setup, is it just as easy as doing like a install graphite? Oh yeah, really? it is. It is. Oh. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that answer, but okay. <laughs> Great. Uh, if not, thank you, Kunal. It's a little gift from the organizing committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.